Hey, Kevin here, Skylabs, doing another video. We've got a good one. We've gotten several comments um, in some of our other videos asking why techniques and Kenwood amplifiers and receivers don't get mentioned in our top five lists. So rather than replying several times, I thought I would just make a video, give you my reasoning, and then later on, I'll give you some specific examples uh, as to why some of those pieces aren't getting into those lists. So uh, if that interests you, stick around. We're gonna get into it, it's gonna be fun. Let's do it. All right, so Kenwood and Techniques. Why do you hate them, Kevin? Why do you never mention them? They're so much better than other receivers you mention. Wow, there's, yeah, I, I know, I, I hear a lot of it. Personally, I'm not a brand person. I don't just stick with one brand. I like to think that most brands make good products and bad products. I think that's reasonable. Some companies make better turntables, some companies make better receivers, some companies make better speakers. And so I don't like pigeonholing myself into trying to be brand specific and building a system based on brand. And if that's what you do, that's cool, it's fine, it's no problem, I get it. It does look nice when all of your components are the same size and they look like they fit together. I get it. From an aesthetics point, it makes sense. From a quality standpoint, uh, not really, but anyway. So really with Techniques and Kenwood, and I don't think these companies, if we were to go back in time and interview them, that they would disagree. They were specifically building their components to meet a certain price point. It, it's what businesses do even today. And while Kenwood, I think, through the, through the late 60s and the early 70s, was trying to compete with Pioneer Sansui Marantz, I do think by the mid-70s, they made a decision to try and get under in price point. They were going to build products for people that wanted the same wattage or the same watt class as the Pioneer Marantz Sansui and offer it at a, at a little bit of a bargain. Yay! And in that case, you have to cut corners. And that's, that's what they did. You know, any, any technician that is inside of these, as much as we are, this becomes very apparent very quick that the techniques and Kenwood models were not, they were not using the quality or the amount of components that Pioneer Sansui Marantz were using. There's nothing wrong with that. There's something in us that we like things that are overbuilt. So while, while the techniques and the Kenwood are achieving the same amount of watts as maybe the Pioneer Sansui Marantz, they were doing the minimal amount to achieve those specs. Where I think the Pioneer, the Marantz, and the Sansui were maybe going a little bit above and overbuilding. And it's no different if you put it in perspective like a car, you know, what's the difference between, you know, a Mercedes Benz and a Ford? You know, they both get you from A to B. It's just one's made with a lot better components and is maybe overbuilt for that task. So I'm not knocking on Kenwood or Techniques. I don't really care. I am just going off of what we see as a repair shop when these units come in and from what we see, there's a lot of corners cut with the Techniques and the Kenwoods. They have usually smaller power supplies. They're usually more of an empty box. And Kenwood is especially guilty of this. You, you look at like the Model 11s and stuff like that. And even though, you know, they have the same power or the same wattage as let's say like a Pioneer SX 1080 or 1050, when you open up that cabinet, there's a lot of room there. And they're using a lot smaller filter capacitors, a lot smaller power supply. And it's just kind of, there's no, you could tell a lot of thought wasn't put in to the repairability or from the engineering perspective. They're cutting corners. And that once again, this is just a business decision. This, is, this doesn't mean I mean, most of these, or a lot of these units are still working today. So did they build a good enough quality unit that survived 45 years? Absolutely. 
I mean, I think that's that deserves an applaud right there, you know. But did they overbuild it? No. Did is the Pioneer 1050 overbuilt? Probably. But to some people, that's worth the extra money. That's why you see the Pioneers and the Morants and the Sansui getting more money than you do the Kenwoods and the Techniques. You know, and and some people could say, aren't you worried about Aren't you worried about being able to sell these units after you make this video, as in the techniques and the Kenwoods? And, and not at all. This is nothing new. This is nothing I wouldn't say already. If somebody came in and they said, you know, they, they go up to the stereo wall and um, they say, well, what's the differences? I usually say build quality, brand, wattage, and collectability. I'll say, you know, if you need 50 watts and you kind of have a tight budget, maybe look at Kenwood, look at techniques, look at Sony, you know, they're, look at Onkyo. There's several bargain brands that will get you the same wattage and inputs and outputs you're looking for, even the aesthetic you're looking for, and you don't have to pay for the overbuild. So there's there's nothing wrong with that. You know, and it's not like you can't knock Techniques and Kenwood. They did make some really good products. I just think there's more that you have to watch out for. I mean, Techniques make some of the greatest turntables ever made some of the reel to reel decks are incredible. Their receivers, they're okay. They're not bad. I mean, I would definitely feel confident selling one to one of my customers and knowing that that, that receiver, that amplifier is going to continue to work for a long time. Does it deserve a spot in the top five lists up against some of the better built ones? Probably not, but that's kind of irrelevant. I'm just explaining why they don't end up in the top five list. It's not that they don't sound as good. That's a totally different thing. You know, we're not basing these lists off of sound. Sound is dependent on how you hear things. A lot of times we're just going off, you know, the repairability and the build quality of these units when we go into these top five lists. You know, I do wonder what maybe the more brand centric people that do like to get on message boards and whatnot. And, you know, even like this example right here where this, this guy says that the Kenwood Super 11 will outperform any Macintosh and the 1980 is even better. You can, you can get parts for either the Kenwood or the Pioneer, not an issue. And I mean, that's totally inaccurate. I just wonder what do they think gives the Macintosh value? Do they think they sell for more money because they just look better? You know, if you take a 100 watt per channel Macintosh amplifier and you put it up against a 100 watt per channel Kenwood amplifier, I'm trying to think of the logic in their head where they go, okay, this one, the Macintosh must cost more because it looks better because they're the same wattage. And that's, that is so far from the truth, it's not even funny. I mean, you, you can't even compare those two. They're not even in the same ballpark. The uninformed people that are waving the flag the most are just really kind of clueless. And it's, it's almost kind of cute in a way, you know, seeing stuff like this. You almost kind of like, oh, buddy, I'm sorry. But, you know, there's a lot of people out there like that. For some reason, they've grabbed onto a brand. You know, it doesn't matter if it's Ford Dodge Chevy, you know, Gibson Guitars, whatever. You know, it, for some reason brand is just really dug into some people and i don't know why good marketing i guess so let's let's give you some examples before i just ramble on too far uh, and ju just kind of show what we see and why we make these lists the way we make them all right and with the kenwoods a lot of times what we see is you know they're really small power supplies uh they're full of faulty switches unrepairable proprietary uh, lots of SDK packs, uh, which are proprietary output packs. Pioneer's guilty of it too, so is Marantz. I'm not, I'm not saying only Kenwood use these. I'm just saying there's a lot of them in the Kenwoods. Uh, cheap knobs, timers. They put timers to shut off the unit so you could fall asleep for an hour and the unit would shut off. They're always problematic though. They put a lot of gimmicky things. Uh, we'll, I'll show you what they call the uh, the jumbo jet. We'll, we'll get to that one. They're empty boxes a lot of times. Like I said, you open them up and you would think there would be just full of components and there's nothing in there. So, well, let's let's start with the jumbo jet. 
So this has got reverb unit in it. It has an electronic rhythm composer with at least 12 different beats and changeable rhythm tones. It has a foot switch for guitar or something similar, the integrated timer, uh, switchable power meters, multi-presence control for different effects and different instruments. So you can plug your guitar into the singer keyboard, two microphone inputs with a separate volume control. Man, talk about a ton of extra crap to go wrong. I wouldn't get into one of these if you paid me. I think we took one in a few years ago and they are now on the do not walk in the door list. I'm not buying them, I'm not selling them, I'm not trading them, I'm not repairing them. So that's the Kenwood Jumbo Jet. And then if you look at stuff like, let's take the Super 11, man, cool looking unit. I mean, these things look awesome. And if you don't know any better from the outside, you're like, man, you know, I could save a bunch of money and get something with 120 watts per channel. Look at the inside of this thing. There's nothing in it. I mean, it's an empty box. There's two tiny little filter capacitors. The power supply is non-existent. They're messy. You can tell the engineers were like, ah, just put it in there. You know, it's not serviceable, really. You're never going to be able to replace those meters. Going back to that message we got, you know, saying you could get any parts for the Kenwood or Pioneer. When I got on eBay to look for these, uh, the Super 11, three of them were available. Out of the three, only one of them had the correct tuning knob. Their knobs, they, they were junk, they broke, no, you can't get them. The other thing would be, you know, those VU meters and the signal meters. When those go bad, you're not gonna be able to get those either. So there's a lot of parts on these units you can't get. You know, if you compare that to the same wattage class in a 1050, anybody can tell if you just look at these side by side. That 1050 is so overbuilt. There's so much better quality parts in here, including a toroidal transformer. That round transformer over here, there you go. There's your game changer. You got the big power supply caps. Awesome. These things are built. That makes that Super 11 look like a toy. Let's do one more Kenwood before we move on to techniques. I pulled up an 11GX, which is another uh, 100 watts per channel monster receiver from the 70s. And just look at the inside of this thing. I mean, there's nothing in here. You got this tiny little transformer on the right. You got two little small little filter caps. The wires are just ran all over the place. It, there's nothing neat about it. There's no thought put into the design. The heat sinks are small. It's just getting the job done. There's no quality about this at all. Same wattage class as the Pioneer. I don't think they were that far apart priced when they were originally made. I think there was maybe a $100 difference. And so, man, if you could go back in time, I would tell whoever was at that stereo store going, well, I could save a hundred bucks. Don't save the hundred bucks. Spend the hundred bucks. That Pioneer is way better. So, you know, and even today you're seeing you know, the GX selling for 1000 to 1400 where you're seeing the, the 1050 uh, selling to between 15 to 2200 And there's a reason for that. You know, it's, it's not just because, once again, the Pioneer's prettier. It's because people have learned over the years that that Pioneer is built a lot better. And that's just what it comes down to. That's just the reality of it. You know, we could split hairs on how it sounds. That doesn't matter. I don't, that's irrelevant going off quality um that pioneer wins hands down there isn't a technician i know that would look at both of these and say uh i'll take the kenwood it's just they wouldn't there's no way you know and it's not that kenwood didn't make some some good amplifiers once again it's just they chose the more budget route and um, there's nothing wrong with that so i just want to reiterate that i'm not here bagging on kenwood i'm just giving you my reasons why they don't end up on the top 10 list that's all all right, moving on to techniques. So let's just take this SA800 um, as an example. And we got Rob here, he's working on this one. He's just trying to clean the volume pot. And you have to you have to connect two different straws together for your deoxit and then get yourself a, a mirror on a stick so you can even see where you're supposed to shoot the deoxid into the, into the pots. You can't get to these pots, they're buried. Techniques are guilty of this all the way through. They just weren't tech friendly. You know, if you look at this SA-101 here, you know, and this is just an 18 watt per channel entry level unit. So 
I don't expect much from going into an 18 watt per channel receiver, but you've got a fiberboard wood bottom. You've got the small little transformer attached to the wood panel on the side. And then if you look in here, there's just, it's an empty box. It really is two STK packs with this small plate for a uh, heat sink. It's just budget. You know, there's nothing wrong with budget, but we just have to accept that it's budget. And putting this up against an 18 watt per channel Pioneer Morant Sansui is just ridiculous. If you're going off quality, once again, if you're going off sound, that's different. You can sit there and AB those. And if you prefer the techniques, good on you, then you don't need to spend the extra money. If you're going for quality build because you appreciate that type of thing, then this is not the receiver for you. So that's really all it is. It's nothing more, nothing less. And here we got another one. You know, this is a Techniques 5570. So 165 watts per channel. Um, these would have been right up against a 1250 or a 1280. And, um, you know, small power supply again, a standard transformer, messy looking. It's not tech friendly at all. You can just tell. If you look at both of them from the inside, or if you hand both these pictures to a technician, without a doubt, you can instantly see that this was cutting corners, or that this was getting the bare minimum done to get the specs they wanted. Sorry, I uh, hope, hope I didn't hurt too many people's feelings be, because uh, I, I shouldn't have. You know, there's a reason why these units are cheaper than their counterparts. The designers wouldn't be offended by it. They knew. It's not like they were trying to make the best product out there. They were trying to hit a specific price point, and they hit it. So good on them. They're still working today. Good on them. I doubt we could say that for a lot of the things being built now. Hopefully, maybe just gave you a different perspective. Maybe see some of the insides that you wouldn't have normally seen. And the reasons why sometimes those brands don't make the best of list. Not just our best of list, but a lot of people's best of list. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Go check out the store. We've got a lot of new items going into the online store, skylabsaudio.com. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Watch another video. Go watch one of our top, our top five lists if you haven't seen one yet. They're really fun to watch. Hope you guys are having an excellent holiday season. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.